Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for the 9th of August. All right. Now, I've left my major charts up here just as they, uh, as I draw them yesterday. Now, just to give you a bit of an idea of how geopolitical events really sort of mess things up a bit. Now, what we're seeing is um, a number of different sort of moves across the currencies, but none of them are really sort of sustained. They're just like short moves, it's a bit of noise. We don't have any sort of real clear dominating trend from the US dollar at the moment. Overall, fundamentals, yes, they're strong in the US, but at the moment, after those um, sort of weak and non-farm payrolls last Friday, it's in limbo and everything's getting pushed around and it's geopolitical events that are doing it, as well as mixed sort of tricky sentiment from central banks. Now, RBA, uh, they left sort of everything basically as it was and the Aussie was uh, down here under 74. Now, with the um, the offshore one, as we know, is uh, is sort of going a little bit nuts. Uh, it rallied and pushed the Aussie higher and took a few other currencies with it. But now this is where convoluted geopolitical issues come into play and economic data. You know, the market's a little bit um, oxygen deprived of strong economic data that gives it sentiment. And, and the Aussie is a very classic example of breaking to the top side, breaking to the downside, back to the top, and it's back to exactly where it was almost yesterday. Okay, so now that, that sets us up for um, a couple of different things. Now, the RBNZ came out this morning. If anything, they changed their, their forward guidance on interest rates. They thought they'd have rates on hold until two, end of 2019. They say that's now going to be into 2020. So that's given the Kiwi a bit of a bearish tone for the moment. And Euro still continues to bang away sideways. The market, everyone's trying to pick the next break. And you're seeing these little sh short-term little breaks and then back into the range. I think Euro, we have to wait for um, some more solid data. The uh, non-farm payrolls, you know, didn't help it a lot. Uh, we're still waiting for direction to come from that. Maybe the US PPI figures today. Sterling, well, it, it's doing the exact same thing. You know, to me still, this, this light blue line, uh, around 129.90 now is the, is the main sort of resistance level. Uh, that's the level that sort of broke down through. So you want to be keeping an eye on that. Brexit, pretty hard to call what the hell is going on there with the politicians. Um, so you're really looking once again for, for economic data, but we don't have any. So the market's sporadically shooting up, down, all over the place, around uh, on the back of the one. Now, dollar CAD, I mean, as if it didn't have enough things going on. Oil has dropped down to 66 bucks. Right, which does support a move to the top side in dollar CAD. Um, now we are seeing a, a huge rift with Saudi Arabia. Now they are, um, they have basically told everyone in Saudi Arabia, sell Canadian bonds, sell shares, sell whatever you can. Uh, they are sick and death, sick and tired of uh, the Canadian PM telling them what to do with human rights, etc. So there's a real major uh, rift there and they are pulling out um, investment interest in Canada across the board with medicine, um, agriculture, a whole bunch of other state run programs. So just watch that space. They look like they are well pissed off and are going to do everything to, um, to screw up Canada. You know, I, I don't think it's going to, they're going to win in the end, but it's just another issue that is affecting dollar CAD and making it even a little bit tricky to trade. Now dollar yen, the trade wars are kicking into gear, and I'll show you some news in a second. We are really starting to get into the childish tit for tat stuff, um, which is right up Trump's alley. I mean, if he's not the biggest kid out there, I don't know who he is, but, it, but dollar yen, it is sort of, you can see it is trending lower, but the moves are, you know, 30 or 40 points down, sideways for, for, for 24 hours, and another little dip lower. Surely at some stage, the market will work out that this trade war is going to really start screwing up the numbers. And that's what we're waiting for. And that's where the yen may appreciate. Now, talking about that, this is where we can come back across to um, just have a look at the US dollar, right? Actually, this is a, another good example just to show you of geopolitical issues. I mean, yeah, sure, we've got a short term uh, uptrend, okay, in the dollar. Now, that was sort of as it was on Monday, just trading sideways. Now it is just truly trading sideways. So around these geopolitical events, just because it's breaking trend lines doesn't mean it's going to go down or up. What can happen is like the dollar index here, it's just trading sideways. And if you were trying to trade, you know, breaks and all these sorts of things, you're going to get caught out. So you've got to recognize what is driving the market. Is there a current trend here in the US dollar or any other currency pair for that matter? No, there's not. So what happens is the currencies just trade sideways through the trend lines. 
And that's very important to understand that. Otherwise, you're gonna keep going for a break trade or a range trade, and you're gonna keep getting hacked to death because you don't understand what is the core catalyst. If it's an economic data event or a central bank, you get the move. If it's a geopolitical issue, it's short term up, short term down, short term up, sideways. And if you're, you continue to bash away there, you will get uh, hammered. Now, coming into the, uh, the economic side of things, well, the equities, you know, pretty much flat in the US. Uh, Japanese equities, the Nikkei due to open up minus 60. We do have some machinery orders here in the, uh, coming out in Japan in about 40 minutes. You know, if there's, there's huge variance there, that may give uh, dolly Yen some sort of uh, direction. If anything, I like the idea of selling dolly Yen. So really weak numbers there would be the ideal um, trading opportunity. Now, let's just piece together where the cash is today in the market. I mean, this is the one thing that you should be thinking of every day when you do come back to um, trade the markets is, okay, where am I going to make money today? Well, first of all, as I was sort of just going through there, you want to pick up what's driving everything. Okay, why is everything sort of a little bit sporadic? Well, it's the offshore one, right? Now, this is a very loose currency. Uh, China are doing all sorts of weird things. And direction is really coming from, from the one. Mass, massively important in the Asian session in particular, right? So that's one thing. Now, you look at the upcoming events. Now, we've had the RBNZ. The RBNZ was, uh, if anything, slightly dovish. Now, they have said um, the potential next move in interest rates could be up or down. So there's that uncertainty, but they have put back the, the date, their expected date for an interest rate hike. So that, to me, gives the, the Kiwi downward momentum. Now, the key part today is we've got some Chinese CPI numbers. Now, this is a huge number. Now, I expect these numbers next month and the month after to be hugely fluctuating as these US tariffs impact. Right, but at the moment, we want to be watching this and the whole globe will be watching it. And not only will the CPI data come out, we now have the offshore one to really focus on and see what the impact is there. Then you come back to the main pairs it's correlating with, which is the Aussie and Kiwi, right? That's where the probably easiest trade is. Now you put the, the, the numbers together, right, with the current sen sentiment, um, the Aussie sentiment. Now if I just come back to the pages, if you look at the Aussie sentiment, Right, the, the core component here is, you know, the Aussie is all over the place. Now, it's a bit tricky, but this puppy here, the Kiwi has a clear sentiment on the downside. So weak Chinese numbers pushes the yuan down. It's gonna push the Aussie down and the Kiwi down in particular. But this one here has, a very, has already got sentiment. So weak numbers, the Kiwi and the Kiwi crosses are gonna be potentially your best trading pairs today, which is, you know, rare. Right? It's not the, ideally my first go-to major currency pair to be trading, but the data tells me, the fundamental drivers tell me where, where to look. So when you come back down here now, we've got a pretty light on 24 hours. Right? So if you come back down, look at the, uh, we've obviously got the machinery orders um, out of Japan now. They are a top tier number. Don't forget, you need massive variance to get Dolly in moving in this environment. These numbers here, CPI, PPI, CPI in particular, hugely important for the Aussie and Kiwi. And then you come back down through the rest of the numbers um, through Europe and North America, okay? It's really the PPI numbers that we're looking for and that's pretty much it, right? So PPI may give the dollar direction if it's, if it's variant. It is an inflation number. So that's where the market will look at it. I don't think we'll see like any gapping like you do on the non-farm payrolls, but it could give the US dollar direction. So really, the plan today is to really focus on uh, this data. Now, if you're in Europe, well, it's in the middle of the night, so don't sort of bust your chops. If you're in North America, yeah, sure, try and hang out for it. Um, if you're in the Asian session, we'll try and definitely make some time for it. If there is variance here in the inflation numbers, uh, that's what, what, what Trump's waiting for. He's biding time to wait for China to start to get hammered economically. And they, it will take a couple of months. So we're watching these numbers for the first signs of any sort of change in inflation, uh, any change of economic activity, that's when things will really heat up. Now, as I was saying, if I just come back over here, I just want to show you um, what's going on here. Now, this is, as you'd expect, um, you know, I don't blame China, but uh, this is what we're going to be experiencing from here on in. Uh, you saw yesterday, the US add $16 billion worth of tariffs on Chinese goods. 
Well, China have retaliated with the exact same number uh, on some more US goods. Now, to me, China needs the US more than the US needs China. So I know that they think no one wins out of a trade war, but I, th I think China's got a lot more to lose uh, as we go forward. Now, we've got... Um, and this is where things get a little bit, obviously a bit more convoluted. And no one really knows what the impact of these tariffs is going to be. They're now sort of saying oil drops on China import data, weighing on equity. So this could destabilise um, sort of global economics for a period, which is a, which is a good thing because uh, we can actually see the impact of what's happening in China and we can trade the other currencies around that as well as the offshore one. It's going to be a good opportunity. Now, dollar cab. Um, now, I mean... Beware what you read in the media. Now, they're saying it's hit a two-week low as investors look past Saudi, Saudi dispute. Well, oil's dropped. The Saudi dispute is a real event. It's a geopolitical event that is very hard to measure. Um, you've got another geopolitical event at the top here. Sterling drops on Brexit fears. Um, the RBNZ, Kiwi dollar skids to one-month low on dovish RBNZ. Now, that's not a huge dovish thing, but slightly dovish. As I said, it get, sets us up for a great trade today with the... Uh, Chinese CPI numbers, uh, and that's pretty much it. This news is just like convoluted. It's hard to work out what the hell is going on, uh, and there's a lot of crap going around. And still down the bottom here, Iran says OPEC may need extraordinary meaning over output changes. Now, it's not a bad thing that the OPEC and the oil producers are argy barging it. Oil shouldn't be at 66 bucks. Um, I think it's a little bit crazy myself, but uh, we'll see how that goes. So overall, a fair bit going on geopolitically. So. Just coming back to your major pairs, now it's a matter of just cleaning up your charts. Okay, so this uh, Aussie line at the top, I don't need that. I'm just gonna be sort of readjusting my support line. I've already got a resistance line on the top side here. Now I'm just gonna leave that, um, that uh, Kiwi line there. I'm just gonna change my line. I like to change, once a, a, a trend line has broken, I like to leave it there to see where the resistance is, but I changed the color just to notify that. Now, Euro, just a slight change to the support level. There is um, just going from that previous high now, we've topped out on the top side. It's just a matter of redrawing that top. You've got sort of three touches there. You know, that's getting pretty tight. I expect Euro probably to break to the top side, break to the downside and be back to where it was again. Uh, Sterling, that trend line, resistance trend line is developing, but that blue trend line I think is the key to it. And uh, as you can see here, we've got a real massive high on dollar CAD. So that adjusts the top side and uh, we are where we are. Now, dollar yen, I mean, this is going to be one of those opportunities where coming to the Asian session, a lot of traders will adjust. Now that it's stabilised where it is, will adjust that support line. You can either leave it where it is, just know where resistance is, even though we've got resistance with the cloud and uh, the top trend line. So it may be worth to start the Asian session. We've got that fresh low, is just leave that uh, there to give you an idea of where the potential entry is for dollar yen. Thing is with dollar yen it's not really running just at the moment so that's uh, a little bit tricky and that's pretty much it guys the um you know follow follow the the, the majors obviously look for the economic numbers now as i said the, the, there's only one major thing out today that's the chinese cpi figures which is a great thing because it means all traders globally especially throughout asia and all the asian banks uh they will be focusing on it very heavily as i said if we see uh, uh some weakness in these numbers well, then the Kiwi is going to be a, a, probably the best trade. I'll definitely jump on the Aussie as well. Now, if the numbers are actually really good, then beware being caught short here. The market is sitting short Kiwi. So even strong numbers, I think it's a short-term trade, but we may see Kiwi pop up to, say, 40, 50, because the market's short, bit of a short squeeze, and that's another level to get short Kiwi. So to me, uh, short-term, you can get long, but Kiwi is a sell both ways, really. Even if the uh, CPI numbers in China are strong, uh, I think it's a sell on the fade of that number. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. US PPI, you may see some interest here in um, Euro. I think uh, Brexit's too hard to call for sterling. And dollar cad, try and work that puppy out. It's all over the place. Um, all right, guys, that's it from me. Pretty detailed uh, FX market insight today. I just want to give you a bit more heads up on where all these various events are coming from. And when you do, um, you know, overall, what we're really looking for is, is clear direction on the US dollar. And at the moment, it's trading sideways. And that may, that's why trading is a little bit trickier because everyone, when this has direction, it makes all the other majors easy to pick off. At the moment, this puppy is just trading sideways. 
and that's pretty uncool. All right. All right, guys, have a good trade day. I'll catch you in the live trade zone and uh, all the very best. Cheerio.